The next speaker for this session is Professor Madan Rao from NCBS TIFR. Professor Madan Rao, you can start presenting. Yes. Yeah. You can start. Yeah, thank you. First, yeah. Okay. Thank you, folks. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thanks, Ridev, Kavita, and Shakuntla for organizing this conference in honor of Deepak and Mustansir, who have continued to be an inspiration to the community of statistical physicists in India in particular, and both young and old. And um, uh, it, it's really a privilege to speak here. And it is with admiration and affection and a very warm thank you for you, for your contribution and your friendship. So this work that I'm going to speak about was done by my postdoc uh, Ayan Rai Chaudhary and Saptarishi who's a, who's a student here. Um, and it refers to what we call active force patterning in the context of cells and tissues, which are generated by a mixture of stresslets. Yeah, so uh, in, in uh, very recently in Sanjay's uh, 60th uh, celebration, 60th birthday celebrations, uh, I had uh, described our work on active segregation of molecular components in the cell and introduced the concept of active emulsions with uh, implications to mesoscale segregation on the cell membrane in the cytoplasm and for nuclear organization. Uh, we sort of showed that uh, this uh, was the, the, the segregation was a result of the uh, application of active stresses, both contractile and extensile, which drive segregation of other molecular components. And I also discussed the consequences of time reversal symmetry breaking in these dynamical systems. Today, what I'll do is, um, is I'll uh, discuss, I'll talk about the segregation of the agencies or agents of active forces themselves, namely actin and myosin. The, these were responsible for segregation in the talk I'd give, given earlier, but one might ask, how do these agents of, of active forces themselves segregate uh, in the context of cells and tissues? Okay, so here's, uh, so here's what I call force patterning. And this is what you see uh, right across cells and in tissues here. What you see in the left is uh, myosin and uh, kinesin and segregating in different regions in the red and green. Uh, this is across the scale of the cell. And on the right is uh, a beautiful picture of segregated uh, species, diff two different species of myosin, which segregate in the green and red junctions. This is across the tissue. So what you see here is different cells which are uh, touching each other to form a two-dimensional epithelial tissue. This is of the inner ear. And, uh, and you find that this, this beautiful patterning of these different species of myosin is responsible for the cellular patterning that you see across the tissue. Okay. So the question now is how does this active patterning, is there some general theory one can, can write down about these active force patterning in, in these uh, both in cells and tissues. So this is what uh, uh, the, these, these uh, I'd like to um, emphasize, that both actin, actin and myosin and kinesin and microtubules are molecular agents of biological force in cells and tissues. And there are many species, multiple species of actin and myosin and kinesin and, and microtubules. These mechanochemical agents, namely actomyosin and kinesin microtubules, participate in both active force generation, that is they apply local stresses, but they also sense forces. And they sense forces by uh, 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 an, a stress-dependent turnover or stress-dependent binding and, and unbinding to the medium in which they are present. Okay. Uh, and so, this is the combination of these force generation and force sensing that results in this large scale force patterning and indeed excitability, as I will show uh, soon. Okay, so the, the model that we uh, construct is sort of a, an abstract model, but it's very fairly general. It's, uh, it's having an underlying cytoskeletal mesh created by, let's say, actin. We'll focus on actin uh, today. Uh, and embedded in this, is a mixture of, of stresslets. The stresslets can be either contractile, such as an actomyosin, or they can be mixtures of contractile and extensile. Okay? But in this particular uh, talk, I'll uh, focus on 
a mixture of two contractile species of myosin and they're embedded in an elastic actin medium, which is again further embedded in the solvent. Okay. As I said, uh, the myosin applies contractile stresses, they're force generators on, the, on this elastic medium. And further, there are four sensors, that is the binding and unbinding kinetics depends on local stresses. So what we have here is a, is a medium as shown on the right in this yellow background with crisscross lines showing the elastic actin. And on that, you see these uh, uh, blue and red uh, uh, schematized myosin species. Okay, there are two different myosin species which bind and unbind to this actin mesh. When they bind, they, uh, they, when they bind, they apply contractile stresses. Their unbinding depends on the local stresses that are present in the in the medium. Okay, so there are two de uh, density fields which are called rho one and rho two. The two different species of myosin. The meshwork is described by a strain tensor epsilon which is of course the, the divergence of, the symmetrized divergence of the displacement field U. Okay, so the idea is now to of course write down hydrodynamic equations for both the displacement field of the, of the elastic mesh and the bound myosin, the bound, uh, bound and unbound myosin. So here is it, we'll assume that the system is very, is highly overdamped and what you have is a balance between frictional forces on the left and on the right, you have the sum of the uh, of the forces, local forces, uh, in the acting on the uh, on the myosin mesh. Uh, sigma E L is the elastic part of the of the of the uh, of the stresses, which are, which are which will be taken to be purely linear elasticity. The second term is the active stresses generated whenever a bound myosin uh, species uh, attaches to the mem uh, to the meshwork, and the last term is the dissipative stress. Which is proportional to the local viscosity. Sorry for that. Uh, the second equation is the dynamics for uh, the myosin density, the bound myosin density, and uh, uh, the bound myosin density uh, rho b. It could rho b could be b could be equal to one or two, and that is directed by this by the second term on the left by the local uh, meshwork velocity. On the right, you have a local diffusion. And SB is a strain dependent myosin turnover, binding and unbinding. We'll assume that the, that the myosins uh, apply affine deformations on the meshwork and therefore we'll take the density of the meshwork to be just the, the, the delta rho, namely the change in the density of meshwork is just related to the local compression. Okay. And so we won't, so the actin density, the meshwork density is slaved to this local compression and therefore it does not contribute to the dynamical equations that we have. Okay. Uh, we'll have to give a form for this active stress, the active stress in general, which, which appears in that, in the second part of the stress uh, equation, uh, is dependent both on the, uh, on the actin density and on the bound myosin density. And clearly uh, a simple form as, as schematized here, would suffice. It would say that the more myosin that you have, the more is the active, uh, active stresses, and possibly there's a saturation for very large uh, act, uh, myosin density. So this is the kind of, of uh, equations that we will we'll write down for the elastic mesh and for the two species of myosin. But of course, uh, you know, one can write down the equation for the two species of myosin in terms of segregation parameter phi, which is the difference in the two in the density of the two species of myosin. So here's the full set of equations written, written in terms of the local, local net myosin density, rho one plus rho two, and net difference or segregation parameter phi, which is rho one minus rho two. And this is the usual equation for, the, uh, for how the mesh velocity changes as a function of local stresses. Uh, when one introduces the strain dependent, uh, you know, when one introduces a form for the active stresses, like I showed here, uh, you find that the terms in the equations of motion get renormalized. And what you see interestingly is that the stress sigma uh, can be now written in terms of this entire uh, uh, object here. Uh, initially, remember the elastic stress was purely linear elasticity to which we added an active component. Now, when we, we plug in the form for sigma as shown in the schematic here and, and unpack the terms, what you find is that the, uh, the uh, linear elastic uh, modulus gets denormalized by activity. 
you pick up active nonlinear contributions coming from activity. And there's a pressure term, which is called the active back stress. So th basically, the local stress gets renormalized okay, to have this nonlinear behavior. This renormalization is an effect of how the active stresses feed back onto the uh, actin mesh. Okay, but, but what you see is that there's an epsilon, uh, epsilon term and epsilon square term. And so the, the fact that B2 could be negative could in, introduce interesting uh, consequences. Okay. Uh, Professor Rao, you have two more minutes. Okay, so I'll, I'll finish very quickly. Now the standard uh, way to go about this is to say, let me do a linear analysis. And when you do a linear analysis of this uh, nonlinear system of equations, what you find is equations such as these, d by dt on the left-hand side with the variables u, rho, and phi equals a dynamical matrix multiplied by the vector u, rho, and phi. And what is striking here is that this dynamical matrix, unlike the usual uh, phonon uh, 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 spectrum case, uh, this dynamical matrix is non-Hermitian, which means that it has a, a whole lot of new properties, which is not present in other in other systems, and this is a consequence of the time reversal symmetry breaking. Uh, what I just want to show is that because it's a non-Hermitian, uh, you it, there is the possibility that the eigenvectors are no longer orthogonal, and indeed, by changing parameters, you can make these eigenvectors coalesce, like so. Two eigenvectors can, can coalesce, or three or three eigenvectors can coalesce. Okay. Uh, now you get a phase diagram here. And the, uh, the phase diagram that I wanted to show you was here. Let's take the uh, right-hand corner, uh, where you have active contractile stresses versus passive elastic stresses. And you find a whole regime where there is a segregation of the two components of myosin. Okay? And uh, in, in addition to the segregation uh, inst instability, uh, you have other kinds of instabilities that, I, uh, that are traveling waves or swap phases as shown here. Uh, I won't go through the details of this because of lack of time, but you get, but basically you get segregation, and this this is interesting because there is no uh, attractive or uh, interaction between these uh, the actin enemies. They 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 are blind to each other. The, the the two actin active stresses. Okay, but yet there is a segregation which is mediated via the active meshwork uh, uh, meshwork embed that embeds the system. Okay. And what we can show is that the driving force of this linear segregation between these, uh, these uh, myosin uh, species is driven by an effective elastic stress dissipation, which decreases as a function of time. And the Lyapunov exponent for this, um, for this theory. Okay. However, at this stage, you would say that, okay, it's, this is like akin to any familiar uh, segregation problem, but no. Uh, beyond the linear segregation regime, nonlinearities kick in, and the effect of nonlinearities is to make the conventional uh, uh, phase segregated pattern, as shown here, okay, of row one and row two. It, it because of the, these forces are contractile, and let's say row one is more strongly contractile than row two, it will make this black, this shaded hatched region coalesce in, in the form of lines, in the form of singular lines. So you find that for, at, at linear level. There is, a, there is a segregation instability. Things grow exponentially fast because it's a linear, uh, uh, linear theory. Beyond a certain time, nonlinearities kick in and make the patches, the finite patches, shrink to these singular lines. Okay? This happens in finite time and is associated with finite time singularities. And this is really akin to stress fibers that one sees uh, predominantly in these in, in cells. Okay? All these actins, et cetera, form these very sharp singular structures. Of course, this, this singularity is tempered because of steric reasons, because of ex, uh, excluded volume. Uh, and so they are not true mathematical singularities, but, uh, but, but this is what we, what we have here. Yeah. Um, uh, there, is, there is an interesting uh, relationship between the difference in pressures and the active stresses and the curvature of these lines uh, as a consequence of, me of uh, mechanical force balance and moment balance. And I just listed here is sort of an uh, um, extension of the familiar Liam Laplace equation, which says that the difference between the elastic stresses on either side of the singular interface equals uh, a tension multiplied by the curvature of that inter interface minus the difference between the active stresses coming from either side of the uh, on either side of this interface. Um, 
I won't go through these exceptional points because of lack of time. And I'll just say uh, that in uh, because of the presence of these exceptional points, what uh, these singular lines can in fact be moving. And so the steady state of this is actually a set of moving singular lines, uh, which, which pass through each other. Um, I'll now end the talk by acknowledging the uh, fantastic work done by Ayan Raichaudhuri and Satrishi. Uh, and uh, here is a list of the agencies that I, I should acknowledge for their funding. Thank you very much. And thank you once again. Um, and a warm, warm congratulations to you, Deepak and Ms. Thank you, Professor Rao, such a, for such a great talk. Uh, any questions? You can unmute yourself and ask the questions. So um, Madhan, I had one very elementary kind of question. So I see that you can calculate the pressures in your couple nonlinear system, right. active yeah. systems. So, yeah. And you have different phases. Right. Is there an equation of state which is analogous to the passive system that you can write for your uh, For the bulk? Right. Yeah. So, right. So in general, of course, you can. Uh, so you can ask for what is the. Uh, uh, so okay. So in some sense, you know the the. Let me just go back to the. Uh, or you remember the extension, the active extension of the, of the. Um, um, no, the active extension of the, uh, young Laplace equation that I wrote down, namely that the difference in the pressures, uh, elastic pressure on either side. Yeah. Which can, yeah. Um, uh, so the, you know, it, so normally the the young Laplace equation would have said that the uh, difference in the pressures on either side should be equal to the tension multiplied by the curvature, hmm. right? Uh, and therefore, I would say that if there is a difference in the pressure, you need to have curved interfaces. But here, uh, uh, that relation doesn't hold. Uh, there's an additional term, namely the difference in the active stresses on either side of the uh, of the equation. So yeah, in some sense, this is the equation of state for for that system. And you can then somehow define an uh, interfacial uh, like surface tension kind of things? Or separate uh, you can define an interfacial tension. Remember, this is an elastic system. Yeah. And yes. these are tensile guys. So you can, the interfacial, uh, the tension is simply the, uh, the dot product of the stress, which you can compute, the stress tensor, dotted with the, uh, uh, with the tangent vector. So yes, you can. OK. I, I guess you're, uh, you're referring to uh, earlier work by uh, Kafri and Mike yeah, uh, that's yeah. where the much yeah right right right. So in some yeah so uh, so this is remember for an unbounded system no walls etc. Right. So there was the they had the boundary sensitivity to the yeah. wall that yeah. uh, but yeah. yours is only the bulk at the system. That's right. That's right. right. That's. Right. But at the level of the bulk properties, you can write down relation. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. I mean, they're just basically force balance and, and uh, yes, you can write this thing. Okay, interesting, yeah. thanks. Yes, Professor Burma, you can ask the question. Uh, unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, uh, again, you are muted. Yeah, Mustansir, you're muted. Uh, excuse me, sir. Unmute yourself, Professor Burma. Please unmute yourself. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Madan, just a quick question about the. Uh, uh, not anymore. Okay. Right. Uh, sorry. Yeah. The question was about the steady state. You you said it's a bunch of singular lines going through. Uh, yeah. 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 That's uh, what I mean. But, yeah. but I, I guess these lines include. I mean, in close different phases. I mean, if I understand. So, so what yeah. happens? I mean, the phases swap. Is, how, how does it go? Right. So, it, um, yeah, I don't know about that. That's a good question. Uh, but remember, the, uh, there is binding and unbinding also. Okay. So, uh, so the lines can move and go through each other in principle. Uh, I see. Okay. So, okay. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, uh, but of course, there's no steric hindrance and uh, things like that in, in our right. in theory. So you know, what happens in the <laughs> physical world is, is, is very different. Uh, mm, okay. So, all, yeah. all right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
So let's thank the Professor Rao for such a great talk. Thank you, sir.